Hi everyone, this is Ryan from rpnt.ca and today we're going to be talking about the drug clozapine, also known as clozaril. Clozapine belongs to the drug classification called atypical antipsychotics. Atypical antipsychotics are also known as second generation or non-conventional antipsychotics. Before we talk about clozapine specifically, we'll cover a bit of information about two general antipsychotic drug classes. So in general, we can group antipsychotics as either typical or atypical. Typical antipsychotics, also known as first generation or conventional antipsychotics, are used in the treatment of psychosis and behavioral problems. They can be highly effective, but do have a high risk of causing side effects, especially extrapyramidal symptoms, which we'll talk about more later on. Typical antipsychotics are used in the treatment of positive symptoms of schizophrenia, which are thoughts, feelings, or actions that are added onto a person's regular behaviors. Something like hallucinations is an example of a positive symptom of schizophrenia. Atypical antipsychotics, like clozapine, are the newer and generally safer option that show fewer extrapyramidal symptoms. They can be used in the treatment of both positive and negative symptoms of schizophrenia. Negative symptoms being things that are taken away from regular behaviors. Examples of negative symptoms include apathy and flat affect. It is believed that clozapine works for schizophrenia by binding to and blocking serotonin, dopamine, and other receptors in the brain. The reason why this is important is that the symptoms of schizophrenia are thought to be caused by altered levels of dopamine, serotonin, and other neurotransmitters in the brain, although schizophrenia is still not completely understood. Clozapine is primarily used for treatment-resistant schizophrenia, which usually means that the client has already tried at least two other antipsychotics and those treatments were unsuccessful. Clozapine can also be used to treat suicidal behaviors in clients with schizophrenia and psychosis in clients with Parkinson's disease. Remember, as an atypical antipsychotic, clozapine can treat both positive and negative symptoms of schizophrenia. Although atypical antipsychotics are generally safer and have fewer side effects, one of the main side effects of clozapine is a granulocytosis, which is a severely lowered white blood cell count that can be life-threatening. This is caused by bone marrow depression. A granulocytosis may present as fever, chills, or chronic infection of the gums, throat, or skin, but may also be asymptomatic. To help prevent and manage this, Regular blood work should be performed for consistent monitoring of red and white blood cell counts. It is possible, but rare, that clozapine causes what we mentioned earlier as extrapyramidal symptoms, or EPS. EPS are drug-induced movement disorders, including tardive dyskinesia, which is a slow onset of involuntary movements like sticking out the tongue or smacking of the lips. Parkinsonisms, which are the symptoms found in Parkinson's disease, like tremors and rigidity, and other dystonias. Other side effects of clozapine include dizziness, drowsiness, seizures, hypo or hypertension, weight gain, and more. Due to the side effects of clozapine, we want to avoid its use in clients with a history of or current bone marrow depression, agranulocytosis, uncontrolled seizure disorders, clients with severe CNS depression, and more. Always remember to assess and monitor for side effects of clozapine. Watch for the signs and symptoms of agranulocytosis and EPS. Remember that clozapine in particular has a relatively high risk for side effects, which is why it is usually only given after multiple other antipsychotics have failed. Clozapine is usually given orally as a pill or sublingually as a tablet. And as with all drugs, always be aware of potential interactions with clozapine, some of which include warfarin, digoxin, other CNS depressants like alcohol, and more. And that's about it for the basics of clozapine. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments or visit rpnt.ca for more help.